Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate a symbology process that I think you're going to like a lot more than the other one. Um, but it does have its drawbacks, which we'll talk about when we're done. Okay, so to start this one, what you need to do is look at the four values, um, think about them in absolute terms, and, and just find the highest absolute value, which would be this one, the 4.4989 degrees Celsius, which is, um, I'm going to round up to 5. Um, if we take an absolute value of 5, um, it's going to encompass everything we have here. And that's where we want to start. So we go back into the symbology, but this time we're going to leave it a stretched color ramp, um, but we're going to change the stretch type to min-max. Minimum, maximum. And we want to get our color ramp to be divergent. I'm going to stick with this one. Um, but remember, of course, you want to have the positive values in red or the warm color. So click on it, format the color scheme, and use it. Okay. All right. Distribution on the map, of course, doesn't look right because we know there isn't, you know, global distribution of cooling. But it's because we don't have our middle value set to zero. And one way we can kind of force that to happen is... Um, to set our min and max values to equal and opposite. So if we go down to custom, our minimum will change to negative 5, and we'll leave our max, we'll bump our max up to 5. We're going to do the same thing for both data sets, so that, that the minimum of negative 5 and the value of positive 5 is drawn the same for both range of values. So we shouldn't, on this map, see any of the super, super dark red. Um, but we will on the other map. Okay, so there's that, and you can see it just changed quite a bit where we don't see a lot of the darkest colors up here because we don't have any values that are, you know, greater than near three. So we're missing um, most of the dark uh, stretch here. So if we do the same thing for the other color ramp, um, oh, yep, leave it a stretch, get our divergent ramp in there and flip it so we have the warm colors for positive values. All right, and then we're going to change this to minimum maximum and put in our own custom numbers and use the same ones, negative 5 and positive 5. Could you make this negative 4.5 degrees Celsius and positive 4.5? Yeah, of course. Um, but I think this is going to set up um, slightly easier legend creation. It's completely up to you if you want to set it at 4.5 instead. Okay, so if we go and look at the map, um, again, I'm um, using the same two data sets, so an earlier period of 1900 to 1929 for our base period. Um, this top layer, the one that we're looking at now, is a 30-year average from um, today, or, you know, 2021. And then this is just the last three years. So this one we would expect to see higher temperatures and um, higher temperatures uh, distributed south of uh, the northern latitudes here. So if I turn this off, that is what we, what we see. Small pockets of cooling. And remember from the other video how light blue we made those. Um, this is a little bit more realistic in that it's just barely light blue because those values really don't get down very, um, very low. So um, what are the drawbacks of displaying the data this way? Um, you will want to recreate um, your legend and you're going to have to uh, mostly eyeball where your divisions are in here, but I think you'll want to create um, steps like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, um, you know, to create some meaning there. Um, so I think the legend um, on this one's going to be a little bit more complicated to make. Um, but um, the display on the map, I think, is a lot more um, attractive. Um, but we don't have the specifics. For the other, uh, for the other classification, method of getting our divergent. There we have really clear classes of areas that are seeing between 0 and 1 degree warming, 1 to 2 degree warming, uh, 2 to 3, etc. And I think it's a little bit more meaningful 
um, a little bit easier to extract the actual information from, whereas this is um, much more um, general, I think, in the story that it's telling. But um, both are, you know, great methods. This one's obviously a lot easier. Um, I think it just produces a less specific result. All right, that's it.